Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today on the channel, I want to do a follow-up to my recent video where I spent the night in sub-zero conditions. In fact, sub minus 35 conditions where the heat was totally zapped from my body and I had to rely on my preps in order to stay warm. But I want to talk in more depth about some of the gear that I used in that video. So let's get to it. All right guys, so if you haven't watched that video yet and you got some time on your hands, I'd encourage you to go check it out. Just make sure you're in a very warm place when you watch it because I get chills thinking about that night to this day. It's incredible how fast the heat gets zapped out of your body in sub minus 30 conditions. But I wanna talk a bit more depth about something I didn't knew existed until about a month ago. And it's these one gallon propane tanks. Apparently they're pretty popular in the overlanding community. But uh, for preppers, I figured I'd talk a little bit about it. Now this is the Ignic brand. There's not too many brands of these. I believe you can also get 10 pound ones. This is your standard 20 pound propane tank, which is great for a barbecue. Uh, it's great for home base. Of course, you can get much larger propane tanks than this, which are also gonna come in handy around a homestead. But if we're just talking about short-term preparedness, particularly in a vehicle, I think that this is just the ideal size. This is the perfect size that I'm going to rely on for my vehicle in the winter time. I used to rely on these things, which are one liter disposable propane tanks because carrying something like this around in the vehicle, not only is it a major hazard because propane is incredibly volatile, especially if you get in an accident, but things like this, they're expensive. You can't refill them, although some people will say that you can. There's places where you can buy adapters to refill these. I don't know if I'm really going to trust that, to be honest, but they're incredibly wasteful. Like this is probably one of the most wasteful things on the planet. Even if you're not a tree hugger, you got to admit how wasteful this is. But this little guy fills a great niche because it's not too big, it's not too small, but it's enough heat that it's going to provide you at least 24 hours of constant heat, enough heat to keep you alive in even the worst of conditions. So you could probably wager that if there was a highway shutdown, chances are if it wasn't this apocalyptic snowstorm or something like that, that you would be good for 24 hours. And you could use this intermittently, you wouldn't have to use it constantly. So this is called the gas growler and you can buy just this by itself or you can buy the deluxe kit set, which I'd probably advise. It comes with this pretty fancy case, which I still don't think is ideal, okay? I'm gonna talk about the case, but I think an ideal case for something like this might be something like one of those Pelican cases. The only problem with that is that then you're getting into, is the case worth more than the canister itself. I'm going to be honest, these can be pretty pricey. Uh, depending on where you get them, they can range from 60 to 130 bucks compared to your standard propane canister, which I believe is a bit cheaper than that. But I just think that this is a great little thing, man. Like this, this is really awesome. So the actual output is exactly the same on your standard 20 pound size propane tanks. If you get the deluxe kit, they give you this adapter, which is gonna allow you to use it with any of the devices that requires these little propane canisters. So that could be your cooking systems or your heating systems. So things like the Mr. Heater that I swear by and I've used for many years, this is uh, just a great way to stay warm in the winter. I'm sure this company has sold millions of these in the last few years. They should probably go public because their stock value is way up lately as a result of all the crazy weather extremes that we got going on. You can also get a smaller version. Now, this version here is probably better suited to a smaller vehicle. The only problem is it kind of requires these uh, smaller canisters and there's actually a base plate which goes under the canister which stabilizes it. So you don't want to have it just like that. You could stabilize it yourself. There's going to be an auto shut off feature. All of these have auto shut off features and they also have auto low oxygen detection. So if the carbon monoxide becomes too voluminous within your confined space, they're going to shut off. So Mr. Heaters are just uh, absolutely excellent. I think I made it clear in the last video, but I wanna make it abundantly clear that you shouldn't use these things in enclosed spaces without some ventilation. Now people will ask, 
Aren't you gonna be losing heat to the outside if you have a window open or something like that? The answer is yes, you are gonna be losing heat, but there's going to be a net gain in BTUs conserved as a result of using it. Now, in terms of the case that they provide you, like I said, I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty sturdy. Um, it's white, so I don't know if that was the best choice of colors. Perhaps that has something to do with keeping it cool. It does have these uh, neoprene foam ends, which are going to allow the propane canister to sit in there and actually be quite secure in there. So you have your hose, you can put your hose in there just like this and zip that up like that. And now there is some, I guess what you call molly webbing on it that you could use to lash this on to like a truck or something like that. What I would probably do is just use one of those ratchet tie downs and tie it to the inside of your truck bed or your vehicle. I do think that the handle on this thing could be a bit better. Like if you're making something really rugged like this, it's nice to see them put a little bit more into the handle because this is just like a strap basically with a little bit of foam padding. And I think they could have sold this better if they made the case a bit like a durable Pelican style case like plastic. Anyways, I just think it's a really practical thing. Like this is, uh, this is perfect for winter preparedness. In fact, I would venture to say that if you were putting together a winter survival kit next to your lithium battery jump starter, you should have some way to keep yourself warm. You know, for whatever reason, you run out of gas, your, your car breaks down, especially if you're stuck in traffic for 24 hours and you just run out of gas. Uh, next to that, of course, you'd wanna have some food. If you're winter time, snow is gonna be there, but a means to heat up and boil that snow, convert it into water. And we've done uh, in-depth videos about building winter preparedness kits that you can go and check out. But I just wanted to give this product its own shout out because I think that this is gonna be one of the staples of my vehicle preps anyways. And of course, if you're talking about a bug in scenario, you absolutely should consider storing some propane. Now, I don't know what the legal limit is. It's probably gonna vary from locale to locale in terms of how much of it you can store. Kerosene is also another option that you might wanna use. I have a kerosene and diesel combo forced heater that I use for home-based applications which require more BTUs for a larger square footage. And of course, at the end of the day, if you're talking about a permanent setup and you have access to firewood, lumber, that is going to be probably one of the most renewable methods of heating your home next to some type of solar heating. And some people ask me, can you just use a system like this, like a lithium battery system with an electric space heater to heat your space? And the answer is yes, but you're not gonna be using it for long. For perspective, even the smallest of space heater that I've seen is minimum 1000 watts. Typically small uh, power systems like this run between one to three kilowatt hours, which means at best you're gonna get 45 minutes to three hours of heat and it's really not gonna be a lot of BTUs. That's why unfortunately fossil fuels still have solar power beat when it comes to actually converting that electrical energy into heat energy. In an emergency, in a pinch, sure, you could use it, but in my personal opinion, don't even think about it. It's just plain is not worth it. Little night core generator like this, incredibly durable, great for small electronics, but this thing couldn't power a 500 watt space heater for more than an hour. And unless you're in a really small closet, you're lucky if that's gonna raise the ambient temperature by but a few degrees. Now, there is another product that Ignic makes and I'm very interested in, and it's an all-in-one heater and cooker all-in-one system. And you can kind of oscillate between the two. I think that's gonna be pretty cool. I believe that Mr. Heater has something similar, but I think that this one that they're putting out is gonna be slightly more functional. And I've always wanted that to have the ability to use your propane heat concurrently to actually cook with. Now, for those of you guys who are commuters and on the go and you don't wanna deal with any of these gasolines or combustibles, there is an alternative and it's these Emergency Essentials Hydro Heat. I've actually done a video on them in the past. I'm pretty sure the company is still around. 
go and check it out. You pair this with your freeze dried food and uh, you're basically good to go. You're laughing. I'm not gonna go into an in-depth explanation about how it works. It works very similar to how an MRE works, only it's meant to work with your freeze dried food. You don't have to worry about having a fire going in your vehicle. The only downside is, I guess if you are cold, it's not gonna provide you with those heat BTUs either. Anyways, guys, I'll post a link to that in the description below. Let me know what your go-to heating source is going to be if the power goes out in the winter time, whether that's in your home or in your vehicle. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe, stay warm. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.